Hey, Miss Susie, how are you doing? Hope you're doing good tonight. Burr. Hey, Miss Mary, and hey, Sarah, what's happening? I'm just, uh, y'all get snowed in? Need somebody to come and, and dig out, uh, you know, dig you out of the snow. Hey, Becky. Hey, Michael. Bill, how y'all doing tonight? It's good to see you all. And you guys are so prompt and punctual. Uh, that's awesome. Um, I was just talking about the, you know, about the blizzard we had this afternoon. And, uh, you know, it's, hey, Miss Charlotte, that cold, cold. I got my, I got my blanket here with me, you know, like sitting in the house. I got the heat turned, got my blanket. So, uh, I hope you've had a good day today. I hope uh, you have had a productive day. Uh, I hope you have been blessed today and uh, just uh, looking forward to kind of getting into tonight's lesson. Uh, we've got our prayer list uh, we want to go over first. And uh, you could be thinking about uh, if there's anybody you want to add to the prayer list or if there's updates of the prayer list while you look over them. We're kind of redoing our prayer list a little bit to kind of make it easy to keep up with things and, and to add. And uh, we're kind of redoing our whole like, little bulletin format uh, to kind of make it as useful and informative uh, and part of, you know, our service and part of the week, actually. Uh, so uh, if you take a time, look over that. I don't know if you noticed uh, uh, on our, our prayer list at the top, we've kind of, you know, the church association, the world, the nation, and our community. That's that's kind of a real broad, uh, it's still, okay. Um, hey, Chris, it's kind of, you know, a broad, uh, hey, Miss Jane, it's so good to see you. Uh, Miss Dot and Jeff and Susie, everybody. Uh, like I say, I, I'm looking at the number at the top, and we got quite a few people that have joined in tonight. That's awesome. Um our, our prayer list at the top, you know, we break everything down. And so what, we, what we've done is uh, we've kind of redone that a little bit. But, and we've included the, the ministries that we support and we're a part of as well. Uh, you know, our church, uh, especially uh, all our members, leadership and our ministries. Uh, you know, those, those have kind of been taken on... Uh, it's just not been the same for since last March, and uh, we, we all know that. Uh, and it's you know it's just a little bit harder, and so I'd continue to pray, continue to pray for me. Uh, you know, it's it's um, it's hard, and uh, it's it's uh, you, you just. Well, I don't know. I don't know how to explain it. I was reading an article today about, uh, you know, the, the 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 things that the added pressures or just the add all the added things that that COVID has brought to to ministry and to churches and everything. And so, um, you know, continue to pray for everybody. Continue to pray for me. We've also included, you know, when we go to pray, uh, Hour of Hope Haiti Ministry. Uh, his house, St. Mary Food Pantry, the Family Focus, River City Mission, and the Gideons. Those are all organizations, ministries that, that we support, uh, you know, with with budgeted money uh, and, and giving. And we help them with, you know, when there are needs, uh, you know, with items as well. And so, um, dog running up down steps. I'm dog sitting. Uh, so, um we, we kind of listed those so you'll know by name and you can lift those organizations up by name. And if there's others uh, I may have missed, uh, I'll, I'll, you know, continue to add. But uh, we want to kind of like narrow that focus down instead of kind of having it just kind of vague and say the ministries. We wanted to, to list them there so you can see what you're a part of because you are a part of that. And so uh, we still have so many families that have lost loved ones. And uh, we want to continue to lift them up. Uh, we're we're trying to leave, you know. It's we're trying to leave folks on there in that situation a little bit longer instead of having them on a week or two weeks and all of a sudden take them off. Uh, because you know, you you is I think we've we've all lost a loved one. We all know um, how that feels, and 
you know, it continues on even after. So we want to just keep people uh, on our prayer list and keep them in in our minds and, and everything. And so, you know, our list, our urgent prayer needs is, is the way that we can do that. Um, I want, uh, you know, uh, Miss Betty B, uh, Tommy was there Sunday and uh, she her knee, uh, I think she's, I don't know, I haven't talked to her or nobody's notified me. Uh, she's got surgery coming up and I really don't know, Tommy, we didn't have a date or anything. So if you remember Miss Betty and, and Tommy, Tommy would be taking care of her. And, uh, you know, when she does, in, you know, in now, uh, she was she was in a lot of pain Sunday from what he said. So uh, uh, remember to lift her up and we'll add her uh, to our, our prayer list as well. So lift Miss Betty B up. Uh, and then we have our continuing prayer needs. Uh, Brother Dawn and Miss Hazel uh, miss them so much. And, uh, uh, you know, we continue to pray for them. Uh, and uh, the other ones, uh, we have, if you have some updates on Lynn, Lindahl Richardson, February the 4th, thanks Susie, uh, February the 4th, that's Betty, Betty B's surgery, on February 4th, Nisa, okay, thank you so much, and so we'll put her on there, and uh, yep, thanks Miss Charlotte, with <laughs> yay, I got a date. I know that she uh, was having to have a COVID test and all those things that go. So very good. But we got her on there. We got a date. And uh, I know you're all great, you know, seeing about if she needs anything. Uh, I don't have to remind you all better at that than me as far as checking in on folks. And, and I need you to check in on folks. And, and uh, one of the ways that we can do that is, uh, you know, if, you, if you're a Sunday school teacher or, you know, if, if you work with children or if you work with youth, whatever that your spot is, you know, check in on those that you teach or those that are in your group, uh, you know, with the WMU, uh, whatever, you know, just that's a great way to kind of just check in and see how folks are doing. And then we have our nursing home and our assisted care facilities, uh, Miss Martha Sullivan and Walter Brunson, and then our homebound, Miss Ada Lou Hook. And so uh, if you notice also at the bottom of the new prayer list, we've kind of updated our information. Uh, you can, if, if you want to have somebody added or removed from our prayer list, uh, we have Dodie's contact. Uh, Lana said you can contact her. She's put her contact information or you can call the church. You can also certainly let me know, but we're just kind of narrowing that down. And then uh, we have our, oh, uh, little Annie has strep throat. Oh no, Becky, and then you and Steve are getting it. So uh, uh, remember little Annie, she's a sweetie. Uh, I've missed that little gal. I haven't seen her in a while. So and you two, Becky and Steve, Y'all hang in there, guys. Um, but down there, to activate the prayer chain, we also put that information down because, uh, you know, that's it's there to pray for people and uh, go, go to war uh, in prayer for folks and intercede on their behalf. And then also, uh, our, we have a deacon of the month, and, and uh, you can contact, you can get a hold of them. Uh, and I know that uh, James is our deacon of the month for the rest of this month, and I know that they're more than willing to help out any way that they can. But we're trying to trying to make it make our our. Uh, in, it's like it, it, it's a bulletin, but you know it, it's more than a bulletin. It's more than than in, you know information. We want to make it user friendly, and we want to be able to to use that as a ministry. You know, I don't know if you've ever thought about using the bulletin as a ministry or not, but uh, it's a great way to, to get at reach information. And uh, I know that some of them are, are taken and delivered. And so it's actually a connection to the church for a lot of people that can't make it there. And so um, that's kind of it for that. If anybody, uh, you know, if you have anything to add, you can go ahead and add that. Um, we got a lot of ground to cover tonight, so I would like to go ahead and just, you know, 
pray and uh, pray over our list and spend just a few moments in prayer tonight before we get started. So uh, if you would pray with me, Father, we thank you so much for this day, Lord, and I thank you so much for those that are uh, here tonight and watching, Father, and uh, I thank you for them, and, and I love them, and I just pray your blessing upon them. And God, our prayer list, uh, you know, it, it's... Uh, we we remove folks uh, uh, when they get better or when they we we you know when they're asked to we we just take that as a praise Father that that you have moved in their lives and you're moving in their lives God but uh, you know there's there's always others that that take the place and we have we have a lot of sick folks uh, that we know of in our family and. And our friends and even work and within our community, God, and uh, we, uh, we lift them up to you. And Father, uh, I just pray that you'll be with them and watch over them. Be with those that are sick, Father, and struggling. God, just touch them. Uh, you know, there's COVID-related related sicknesses. That's always uh, at, the, at the front of the list, it seems, but there, there's so many other sicknesses and things that are going around, God, and, and we just lift them up to you. Father, for those that have lost a loved one over the last several weeks or months, God, we, we just pray that you'll continue to be with them and continue to comfort them and lift them up. Uh, Father, uh, we, we praise you, God, because you are a, a good good father you are a gracious god you are a loving god and, and and you you listen to all our prayers father we know that we can come to you and father we just declare our dependence upon you that we need you that that we do struggle father that we do hurt that we do feel pain uh, as well as we feel joy and, and excitement, God, but uh, there's times when we do just kind of get discouraged, God, and we just we just pray that you will um, just encourage our hearts, that we will not lose lose heart, but Father, we will we will turn to you and we will we will see you working and moving in our lives and and, and in the world around us. And Father, we uh, we just thank you for this time together. May this time be used the best for you. Uh, may we grow closer. May we learn more, Father. And through this study, more than anything, Father, I just pray that we will see how many people are deceived by the enemy and how many people are lost and how many people fall for these false religions and these cults because they're searching for something and it's what they're searching for. It, 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 you, you're the only one that can provide it, Father. You are the way. You are the truth. You are the life. No one comes to you, the Father except through you. Father, you are our salvation. You are our hope. And God, when we be reminded that as we study these false religions and these cults, Lord, that there's so many that don't know you. And may that burden our heart, Father, for the lost. May that motivate us to, to, to get out and, and to tell others about you. Lord, we love you and we thank you and we praise you. It is in your precious name I pray, the name above all names, the name of Jesus, our Lord and Savior. Amen. So it's good to be with you all tonight. Tonight, uh, we are going to uh, talk about a group. <clears throat> I would probably venture to say that every one of you, I, I may be, I may be st stretching it, but I'd say every one of you at one point in your life have had them knock on your door. Uh, and so uh, we will be talking about the Watchtower Bible and Track Society, okay? And so that, that's the name, but you may know them more by the Jehovah Witnesses. Uh, hey, Pam and Larry, it's good to have y'all join in. Well, the, we're, we're going to look at the Watchtower Bible and Track Society because that was, that's like their originally, that's kind of like their main, that's their main name, uh, but they, they, they go by the Jehovah Witnesses. Sadly, this 
cult gets labeled as Christians, okay? Uh, this is a quote I found off of a website. Uh, you know, I told you last week when we were looking at numbers and, and uh, you know, I, I got this one website that tells how many, you know, people belong to what religion or whatever. If you go to the, the Christian part, they, they include Catholic, they include uh, Jehovah Witness, they include Mormons, they include all those in the Christian category. Uh, and, and that's kind of a skewed number. But if you look at a lot of websites, um, Jehovah Witnesses is a Christian denomination deviating from mainstream, mainstream Christian beliefs and practices. Okay, that was a quote. Jehovah Witnesses is a Christian denomination deviating from mainstream Christian beliefs and practices. I'd say deviating is a really soft, soft term. Uh, they are not even remotely Christian. Uh, and if you noticed, uh, I, I called them a cult. And I'll explain that in a little bit because we have cults and false religions. Our first night we looked at that. So these are some famous, well-known Jehovah Witnesses. Uh, if you watch tennis, or if you're a fan of tennis, Serenus and Venus Williams are. Uh, they still are practicing. Uh, the rock star, he died a few years ago, Prince. Uh, he kind of, when he died, that brought the Jehovah Witnesses kind of more to the forefront again uh, and when he died because he was the Jehovah Witness. Michael Jackson and Janet Jackson, uh, they were Jehovah. Well, Janet still is. Michael's not. He's gone. Uh, like Prince, he's died. Uh, Jehovah Witnesses. Um, Damon Wayans, I don't know if you watch. I don't know if you've ever seen the movie Major Pain or uh, I love that movie, by the way. Damon Wayans plays Major Pain. Uh, he has several other brothers, Sean and Marlon. Uh, they have done a lot of movies. They're comedians. They're funny guys, but uh, Jehovah Witness. And I did not know this little bit of trivia for you tonight. Former President Dwight D. Eisenhower was raised Jehovah Witness, but he left as an adult. I really don't know what he went to. It didn't say, but he was a Jehovah Witness. Uh, Many, many years ago, uh, I don't know if you know him or remember him, he was the pastor at Reedland Baptist Church. His name was Paul Blizzard. Uh, he was there in the, gosh, we moved down here in uh, 94, 94. Uh, he was pastor probably in the late 90s, early 2000s. He was there for several years. He came out of Jehovah Witness, and he shared his testimony numerous times and uh, it's pretty amazing i do not know where brother paul's at now but uh, he was kind of like one of the first people i knew uh, you know personally and had heard their story kind of like you know because most people think well they're just obnoxious you know a lot of them think they think they're christian or protestant they're just obnoxious you know door knockers and they don't realize the magnitude of, of their teachings and how wrong they are but uh these that that's some famous well known. There, there's a there's a lot of other ones, but uh, those are kind of some that you might know. These stats are taken from their own website. I spent a little time on their website, which is a very nice website. Uh, I, these these are their own stats uh, in the United States. Oh oh yes, Susie. I I know it. He was kind of hard to. Uh, he stayed booked up talking, speaking a lot. Uh, I think I heard his testimony. I used to go to Pizza Inn on Wednesdays. They used to have what they called Christian, Christian Businessmen and Women's Association, and they had uh, a breakfast, and they had somebody share their testimony like every Wednesday morning, and I would go to that every week, and I think that's maybe the first time that I ever heard his story. But this is from their website. In the United States, there are 1.3 million ministers who teach the Bible, there are 12,355 congregations, one to 273 ratio of Jehovah Witness to the population. Um, oh, okay, my, that's cool, Michael. Yeah. I wonder who that, I wonder who that was. Hmm. And I might have been, I don't know, it might have been Paul. I don't know. 
Um, so this is they they uh, they're very um, they keep a lot of records. They keep good records, and like the Kingdom Halls, they report in and they fill out these reports, and those reports go back uh, to their headquarters. Um, Two thirds of Jehovah Witness are women. Matter of fact, the last couple of times that I had visits, they were women. I've been blackballed. They won't come visit me anymore because I like to talk to them and ask them questions that they don't answer, or don't know, or can't answer because they're not allowed to. Uh, 8.6 million worldwide with 120,382 congregations in 240 countries. Um, oh, hey, Leslie, it's good to have you. Uh, so, so that's, that's, uh, from their website. Uh, this is how they get their numbers. Uh, they tell you how they get their numbers. So we're talking 240 countries, uh, 120,000, over 120,000 congregations worldwide, 8.6 million worldwide. That's, you know, think about it. There's 8.6 million lost people. Uh, we count as Jehovah Witnesses only those who are actively preaching the good news of God's kingdom each month. This includes those who have been baptized as witnesses as well as those who, though not yet baptized, qualify to share in the preaching work. Uh, each month, witnesses report their preaching activity to their local congregation. This report is made voluntary Congregations report are tabulated and the totals are sent to the local branch office and the branch sends the totals for each country or territory to our world headquarters. So that's how they keep up with all that. Uh, Jehovah Witnesses have an active presence in most countries, though they do not form a large part of the population of any country. They are banned in the Soviet Union and Spain from the last one of the articles I, I, I read. Uh, and I'll talk about that, why they're banned from, from those countries. Uh, Jehovah Witnesses are among the most radically and ethnically diverse religious groups in America. Um, if, the, if you could say two things positive, uh, one is their dedication to going door to door and talking to people about their... Yeah, thanks, thanks, Michael. That yeah, that is that's uh, that's more me. Chris, you're getting ahead of us, brother. <clears throat> I just kind of started this, uh, so Michael, Michael's on it. Michael, Michael's watchdog tonight. Uh, so if there's two positive things we can say, it's their diversity, and uh, not you. <laughs> you're fine. You're fine, Chris. It's their diversity and their dedication to to door to door visitation. Uh, you can say what you want to about them, but, you know, as far as them visiting and sharing what they believe, they got us beat hands down. We don't even come close. Uh, granted, their, their, motivation, uh, their motivation behind it is, is wrong, but, uh, you know, and as far as their diversity, no more than four in ten members of the group belong to any one racial or ethnic background. 36% are white, 32% are Hispanic, 27 are African American, and 6% are another race or mixed race. So uh, they're a very diverse group and, and everything. So on your chart, remember we have our comparison chart, and there was some at church, and we're going to keep those out. You can catch them in the morning, uh, Sunday mornings if you want, or if you want to swing by the church anytime during the week. Uh, Lana printed off a bunch, and they're, they're up front. They're actually on the communion table is where they were at. Uh, when I, where I left them, they may have moved since then, but if not, they'll be... Uh, uh, <laughs> we got we got a, we got a brother we got brothers getting ready get in get into it here on the in the comment section brother brother gets brother there's gonna be some some shenanigans going on uh but we're gonna get into our comparison chart and and if you ha have one or don't have one grab some at church uh and you can fill in the blanks because we're gonna look at the key person or founder, the date, and location. So if you're ready for our chart, um, you can do that. 
And if you notice on the chart, I have Christianity on that side, so you can write them in and compare them. Uh, the Watchtower Society was begun by a Charles Taz Russell. Taz or Taze, I don't really know how he pronounces it. It's T-A-Z-E. Uh, I've always said Taz, uh, like the Tasmanian devil. I don't know why, but it just seems like, you know, it could be Taze, because uh, that's kind of like more how it's spelled. Charles Taze Russell, 1852 to 1916. Uh, Charles was raised in a Protestant church in Pennsylvania. And as he grew up, he said there were certain things which he did not like in the Bible, okay? Uh, imagine that. Uh, he, he's like, I like this. And he didn't like the teachings of hell. He did not like the teachings of eternal judgment. And he didn't like the teachings of the Trinity. Uh, when I read that, it reminds me of a quote by Francis Chan. It says, whenever I read the Bible and come across something that I disagree with, I have to assume that I'm wrong. Okay, so he didn't like the Trinity because it, to him it wasn't rational. Like to anybody, can anybody understand it? Is it rational? No, the Trinity is too complicated of a doctrine. We, we can understand basics of it. And, and the, the doctrine of the Trinity, we, we, we believe by faith and, and we accept it as you know, truth uh, because the scripture teaches it. Uh, but he said it was, wasn't rational and he couldn't understand it. So what do you do when you disagree with stuff in the Bible and it's not rational and you don't understand it? You develop your own theology. And so that's what he did. He's like, I'll just do my own thing. And he wrote and published a series called Studies in Scripture. Uh, so, so there you go. That's kind of how it all began. Uh, in 1879, he began to publish Watchtower Magazine. And you're probably familiar with Watchtower Magazine. If you've ever had some JWs come by your house, they like to give you literature. Watchtower Magazine, Awake Magazine. Uh, I don't take any. I refuse it. I'm not mean about it, but I, I don't want it because it's it's wrong. Uh, in 1884, he incorporated the organization in Pennsylvania as the Watchtower Bible and Tract Society. So before it was no, but known as the Jehovah Witness, it was the Watchtower Bible and Tract Society. And it's incorporated. It's a business, okay? Uh, it is a billion, billion dollar or more industry. Uh, so in 1909, he moved the headquarters to Brooklyn, New York, and that's where it remains to this day. Not only was Mr. Russell a terrible theologian, but he was a terrible prophet, okay? Early in his ministry, he calculated that Jesus was going to visibly return to earth in 1874, he didn't show up. Uh, so he he's like, well, you know, if he's not going to show up in 1874, I'm going to recalculate. He changed his calculations to Jesus returning in 1914. He didn't show up. So Mr. Russell, not to be defeated, what he did, he's just he just redefined the second coming of Christ to mean this. Jesus had returned as an invisible spirit, a ghost, in 1914 to help set up his organization. So when Jesus didn't show up for his second prediction in 1914, he's like, well, he did show up. He showed up as a ghost. And in 1914, he showed up as a ghost and he helped me organize and set up the Watchtower Bible and Tract Society. Uh, you can't make this up, church. You can't make it. Listen, I, I try my bit. I, I try not to make fun. I, I really, you know, I really don't. But I, I read this, you know, and people, uh, people were, uh, were, I'll get to that in a minute, uh, Chris. Uh, I'll, I'll answer that for you. Uh, Christians get this, you know, we believe stupid stuff. We believe about a, a global flood and, and a boat. And we believe about a man being swallowed by a giant. Well, listen, some of this stuff is sheer lunacy. It cracks me up. You know, Jesus came back as a ghost and he helped me set up the Watchtower and Bible Society in 1914. 
So Russell died in 1916. So uh, two years after, you know, the ghost Jesus uh, shows up and helps him get his organization started. In 1917, it was taken over by one Joseph Franklin Rutherford. Uh, his timeline is 1869 to 1942. It was under Rutherford that the watchtower was built into the great theocratic giant that we know today. Remember that word, theocratic, T-H-E-O, which is God, theo, uh, theocratic, C-R-A-T-I-C, just like democratic, but it's theocratic. By theocratic, they claim to be a theocratic kingdom of God on earth, okay? Uh, a lot of this is going to click with you. If you've ever talked to any and you spent any time talking to them, uh, this will kind of click with you why they believe and think that they do and why they call things like they do. By theocratic, they claim to be the theocratic kingdom of God on earth. And what's meant by that is they are a government ruled by God here on earth, and all other governments are satanic. The only government they recognize as true is their headquarters in Brooklyn, okay? They do not recognize any local, you know, the mayor or anybody of, of, of you know, Kevill, Ballard County, uh, McCracken County, they don't, you know, Paducah City Commission, the mayor, the state, the governor, the president, no, they don't recognize any of that. They have one government. They are theocratic kingdom of God on earth, and God rules it. Uh, it's under Rutherford's leadership that the name Jehovah Witnesses began to be used. Uh, and the reason for that name change and that name usage he said that they would do this to vindicate the true name of Jehovah since he claimed that Jesus Christ is not God and the Holy Spirit is not God, but Jehovah alone is God. And so their name comes from the belief that God's personal name is Jehovah, which that is inaccurate. That is not God's name in the scripture. His name properly translated is Yahweh. So Rutherford, like Russell, he was a lousy prophet also. I don't know what it is about this, guys. You know, I'm going to change. I'm going to write our own theology, but I got to be a prophet too. He prophesied this. I love this part right here. You're going to like this. One. He prophesied that Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob would return visibly to earth to help promote the kingdom of God. Okay, Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob. They're going to come to earth, and they're going to help promote the kingdom of God. He was so confident in his prediction. He was so sure that it was going to happen. He built a palatial mansion in San Diego, California, for the three of them to live in when they returned sometime between 1925 and 1929. So Rutherford, Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob, they need a place to stay. So we're going to build them a mansion in San Diego, California. Why not? Why live in Brooklyn, New York, where it's cold and yucky? Build them a mansion out on the West Coast. Because after all, Abraham and Isaac and Jacob, they're West Coast people, right? Uh, well, they never showed up. So what do you do when you have an empty mansion where old dead patriarchs of the Old Testament don't show up. Well, you move into the mansion yourself and you live there. Uh, he lived there until his death in 1942. You cannot have an empty palatial mansion on the West Coast sitting empty. Somebody got to move into it. So he did. In 1942, after his death, Nathan H. Knorr took over and it was under Knorr that the Jehovah Witness developed its strong missionary outreach all over the world. It was also under Nor that Jehovah Witness did their own translation of the Bible, okay? They do not use, will not use, will not read, not allowed to use. If you, if you say, hey, I want to give you a Bible, they cannot take it, okay? It's like, like the Mormons. They did their own translation. It's called the New World Translation. And I'm going to tell you a little more about that translation and how they got it when we get into the key writing sections in just a little bit. So they have their own Bible, uh, their own translation. 
Now, Russell and Rutherford both prophesied with great error. You would think that nor, you know, he's like, well, Russell, he, you know, he messed up and predicted Jesus would come twice. That didn't happen. And Rutherford predicted that Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob would come. That would happen. You'd think that he would leave the prophesying alone. Oh, no. Nope. You know what? He held out for a little while. But he couldn't resist the urge any longer, so in 1966, he began to prophesy through the Watchtower and Awake magazines, okay? Instead of like, you know, the, he, we got these publications, we got these magazines, I'm going to be able, I'm going to prophesy. Now, if you're going to start prophesying, you need to prophesy big, uh, his first major prophecy was this, that in 1975, 1975 was going to be the end of the age and Armageddon would occur at that time. Now, 1975, that's the year I started junior high. And as a sixth grader, it did seem like the end of the world. But 1975 came and went. Uh, I survived middle school and there was no Armageddon. And they took a hit for that one. The Jehovah Witness organization took a hit for that one. In 76 and 77, over a million Jehovah Witness left the watchtower because they were disillusioned with the organization because it claimed to be the voice of God on earth but had proven to be a false prophet. Nor died in 77, and a man named Frederick Franz took over. Uh, he had been the watchtower's leading theologian for over 60 years, he died in 92 at the age of 98. Uh, and since then, they have had several presidents and governing boards. They've continued to hold steady knock on every door possible, not just in the U.S., but worldwide. And they crank out millions upon millions of publications worldwide. So that's their founding fathers, and that's their founding roots and kind of when they're organized. And we'll go to the next category is their key writings. Uh, their key writings is their own translation of the Bible. It's the New World Translation only. Now, the Jehovah Witness claim that five Greek scholars in the Watchtower did this translation. Uh, you, they, they got their own, imagine that, they got their own Greek scholars to do their own translation. But people that know Greek and Hebrew, they have studied and they have scrutinized the New World Translation uh, quite a bit and they have found that there are gross errors in the translation. And it was obviously produced as a conscious attempt to make the Bible fit their own witness theology. You know what? Like in the beginning, he didn't like the theology. He didn't like the teachings on hell and judgment. He couldn't understand the Trinity. To him, it wasn't rational. So why not rewrite the Bible to fit your own, your own theology? Um, here's a prime example. In John 1.1, uh, in the English Standard Version and in the NIV, the New International Version, uh, I use the ESV. Some of you may use the NIV. Uh, they translate that verse as, In the beginning was the Word, and the Word was with God, and the Word was God. Okay, The Word was with God, and the Word was God. In their translation, in that New World Translation, it translates the passage as this. In the beginning was the Word, and the Word was with God, and the Word was a God, little g, okay? The addition of the indefinite article A is added to avoid the conclusion that Jesus is God. It's a big difference. That's, that's, that's quite a heretical uh, uh, typo in translation. Um, it's not a typo they, they did on purpose, but... Uh, in the beginning was the Word, the Word was with God, and the Word was a God. Uh, <coughs> excuse me. Uh, so that, that's, that's their Bible, the New World Translation. Oops, get out. Stan wants to get my lap, and he can't. He's too big, and he wants to join in on Bible study. He's feeling a little, little, uh, he's leaving now. He's feeling a little lonely, not getting enough pup attention. So, other key writings are reasoning from the Scripture. Reasoning from the Scripture. And it is basically a 446-page Jehovah Witness handbook for evangelism. 
uh, giving them a question to ask unbelievers, okay? It's published by Watchtower Bible and Tract Society in 1985. The other one is, What Does the Bible Really Teach? It is a 223-page book from the Watchtower that explains the Bible from the perspective of the Jehovah Witnesses. It was published in 2006. There are two other big, big, major publications are the Watchtower Magazine, uh, this was taken from their website as well. Uh, you know, they they put all their stats and everything out on the watch on their website. They answer questions, of, you know, on what they believe and why. You know, all the questions that you and my I might ask. You know, they they answer those. They give scripture from their Bible. It's taken out of context, but I mean, they they explain all that. But it says. Uh, the Watchtower shows us the significance of world events in the light of Bible prophecies. It comforts people with the good news of God's kingdom and promotes faith in Jesus Christ, which ironically, uh, this is my parentheses, okay? This isn't from their website. It promotes, it comforts people with the good news of God's kingdom and promotes faith in Jesus Christ, which ironically, they don't believe Jesus as Lord and Savior or as God, but, but they, they throw that in there. Uh, this is from their website back on, on their, uh, uh, their, their saying. The Watchtower has a public edition and a study edition. The public edition is published every four months at an approximate circulation of 93 million copies in 369 languages. And the study edition is every month at a circulation of 14 million copies. Then they have the Awake magazine. Uh, the Awake magazine, it has the exclamation mark after the E in Awake. It's like, Awake! Uh, it's, this is taken from their website. Awake shows us how to cope with today's problems and build confidence in the Creator's promise of a peaceful and secure new world. Uh, Awake is published every four months and is considered to be a companion magazine to the Watchtower. It has a total worldwide circulation of over 93 million copies in 225 languages per issue. So um, that's, that's their writings. So the next category, who is God? Who is God? Uh, well, one person God called Jehovah. There's no Trinity, and Jesus is the first thing Jehovah created, okay? So who is God? There's no Trinity. God is Jehovah. Uh, who is Jesus? Well, Jesus is not God. And before he lived on earth, he was Michael the archangel. And Jehovah made the universe through him. On earth, he was a man who lived a perfect life. After dying on a stake, not a cross, he was resurrected as a spirit. His body was destroyed. Jesus is not coming again. Remember, he returned invisibly in 1914 in spirit. And very soon, he and the angels will destroy all non-Jehovah Witnesses. So there you go. Jesus is not God. And that's, you know, he was Michael the archangel. Uh, remember when we studied about, uh, we were, we were on Wednesday nights, we were in Paul's letters, and, and he was, uh, those that, that worshiped angels. And he said, you know, God created a angel and that angel created another angel and that angel created the next angel and, and you know, on, 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 on. And there was that angel worship. This, this comes, it, it's like, this comes, Chris, I'm getting there. My Chris is, he's antsy. He's just really antsy tonight. He's so eager. Yeah, I, man, buddy, you just got to be patient, my friend. Oh, I love it. I love it. Uh, but he died on a stake, not a cross. Uh, he was Michael the archangel. And so uh, there you go, the Jesus. Now, who is the... No, you're fine, Chris. <laughs> you're fine. <laughs> <laughs> That's funny. Who is the Holy Spirit? Okay. Well, the the Holy Spirit, he's impersonal. The impersonal Holy Spirit is not God, but rather an invisible active force from Jehovah. Okay. Now, 
that kind of sums up their, you know, if they don't believe in the Trinity, you know, <laughs> I love you too, Chris. Uh, we, if you don't believe in the Trinity, if you can't under, you know, then you, you write it out of your Bible and that changes everything about God and Jesus and the Holy Spirit. The most cultic doctrine of the Jehovah Witnesses is their doctrine concerning Jesus and the Trinity. Uh, and I took these from some of their own writings. Uh, this is from the Harp of God, page 101. Some insist that Jesus, when on earth, was both God and man in completeness. This theory is wrong. This is from Let God Be True, page 81. The Holy Spirit is not a person and is therefore not one of God, uh, the gods of the Trinity. This is from Let God Be True from page 111. The Trinity doctrine was not conceived by Jesus or the early Christians. The plain truth is that this is another of Satan's attempts to keep the God-fearing person from learning the truth of Jehovah and his son Christ Jesus. Uh, this is also from Let God Be True, page 101. The obvious conclusion, therefore, is that Satan is the originator of the Trinity doctrine. Uh, this is from Studies in Scripture, volume 5, page 45. He was put to death a man, but raised from the dead a spirit being. The man Jesus is dead, forever dead. Uh, the Jehovah Witnesses, this is that the end of, there, there's more, I, you know, one of those have been enough. I think you get the point of their writings and their teachings. Uh, one of the reasons why the Jehovah Witness reject the Trinity is because the word Trinity is not in the Bible. And that is true. The word Trinity is not in the Bible. The word Trinity is actually Latin, but the Trinity is taught throughout God's word. Uh, theocratic kingdom is nowhere mentioned in the Bible either, but that's what they call themselves. Uh, that's kind of an interesting thing. It, it really boils down to this. Um, Charles T. Russell struggled with the Trinity. So because he didn't like it or understand it, he got rid of it from their teaching. That's, that's really the bottom line. Is he didn't understand? Listen, I don't understand it. I, I, I've taught it before. I love teaching it. I, I don't understand. Who who can understand? It? Deuteronomy twenty nine twenty nine. Remember, I told you about that. Deuteronomy twenty nine twenty nine. There's this, this. It's just over our head. It's too deep. Uh, it's just too complex. But we believe it in faith. Uh, you know, a lot of people struggle with that, but uh, it's throughout the entirety of the scripture. So how to be saved, if, you're, if you want to be saved, uh, well, this is, this is what you must do. Chris, I'm getting, I'm getting to you, bud, right here. You be baptized as Jehovah's Witness. That's how you're saved. Most followers must earn everlasting life on earth by door-to-door -door work. Um, that's why they're so faithful to knock on doors, because they're trying to earn their everlasting life on earth, okay? Notice I said earth, not heaven, uh, on earth. Salvation in heaven is limited to 144,000 anointed ones. And by the way, this number is already reached, okay? So the millions that are of Jehovah Witnesses, the only ones going to heaven are the 144,000, which is already determined so the people that knock on your door and are faithful to the Jehovah Witnesses, they aren't in that 144,000, and they know it. Uh, there are still, you know, some of the 144,000 alive. They're still here, but they're the ones that come to your door are not. When you see the number 144,000, when I see the number 144,000, you understand that as something else, and you are correct in the Bible the 144,000 are identified in Revelation chapter 7. They are the 12,000 from each of the 12 tribes. 12 times 12,000 is 144,000. I checked that on the calculator. That's some good math. They are the 12 tribes of Israel who have been sealed by God. 
All right, they're Jewish. Uh, nobody else, if you're not Jewish, it's you can't be part of the 144,000. And what that means is they're sealed by God, which means they have the special protection of God. They are kept safe from the divine judgments and from the wrath of the Antichrist, and they can freely perform their mission during the tribulation. So how did the Jehovah Witnesses come up with the number, 144,000? Well, I guess they like that number in Revelation and they thought, hey, that's us. We'll take that and claim that, which you can't. Well, I'm glad you asked how they came up with the number. It came from their second president, Rutherford. After he became president in 1917, he was prophesying that Armageddon was right around the corner. So in an attempt to increase membership, he began to tell his followers that only 144,000 people were going to make it to heaven. So the door-to-door people began telling their prospects that they had better join because, you know, there's a limited number of of seats in 144,000. And you better join the watchtower before it was too late because Armageddon was coming soon and the 144,000 spots were filling up fast. And they preached this for many years. But in 1935, they grew larger than 144,000, so they had a slight problem. Heaven was filled, and Armageddon hadn't happened yet. So what do you do with number 144,001 and up? Well, what you do is you do what any self-respecting false prophet does is you come up with a new revelation from God. And so what he said was this, everybody who became a Jehovah Witness before 1935 would go to heaven, and everyone after 1935 would stay here on the earth and live in a new paradise. So so that's why, you know, there you go. So that's why when you talk to Jehovah Witness today, they have no hope in going to heaven And they believe it because Rutherford told them so. So what happens after death? What happens after death? Uh, Well, the 144,000 live as spirits in heaven, and the rest of the righteous known as the great crowd live on earth and must obey God perfectly for a thousand years or be annihilated. So so Chris, kind of getting back to your, you know, the second coming and, and the rapture, they don't believe in any of that. Uh, they believe everything is is established now, and that they're you know they're kingdom people now, and so uh, none of that second coming. Well, if you don't believe in Jesus as the second as the Son of God, He's not returning in the cloud to take His church back, and uh, you know you don't believe. You just toss all that out, and so uh, if only. And after that thousand years. Well, I guess, Michael, I guess they just press on. Those that don't get annihilated, you just cruise on. You just keep on cruising. I I don't know. I couldn't find anything on that. So you just obey God perfectly, okay, for that thousand years. And and I guess you're good to go. So so other facts, uh, other facts, beliefs, or practices. you might find these interesting ideas. They do not consider the cross to be a symbol of Christianity because Jesus did not die on a cross, but a simple stake. Uh, So, you know, we see the cross as a symbol of Christianity. They don't because he didn't die on a cross. He he, he died on a stake. Uh, They meet in kingdom halls instead of churches. It's it's possible, my you know it's ever changing, brother. Uh, it, or they may you know kind of found like well people are buying this, so we're just going to kind of stick with it. Uh, that's usually why, as long as they can get people to believe, you know why why change up stuff because people don't really question, you know you can't question it. Uh, so uh, they're kind of cruising along. But if you notice, there's kingdom halls. Uh, they don't have windows. Uh, 
they said that's because they were threatened early on in their existence and uh, they, they begin to block out all the windows and now when they build new buildings they don't build them with windows at all. Um, so, so that's they don't go to churches, they go to kingdom halls because they're theocratic kingdom of God. Uh, active members are encouraged to distribute literature door to door, which is an essential part to them living in paradise. Uh, they partake of communion once a year. It's known as the Lord's Evening Meal. Uh, it's kind of an interesting thing uh, if you don't believe in Jesus and his sacrifice and what his body and blood, you know, it, you would think that they wouldn't do that, but, but they do. Uh, they don't celebrate, let's see, they do not observe holidays or birthdays. Uh, this is from their website, and I actually found this pretty interesting because uh, uh, they explain why, they give scripture reasons why. Uh, they do not observe uh, holidays or birthdays. Birthdays and holidays have pagan roots. The early Christians did not celebrate birthdays, and the Bible never refers to a servant of God celebrating a birthday. There you go. As for holidays, they do not celebrate Christmas, Easter, or May Day because of the pagan roots. Nor do they participate in Kwanzaa, Thanksgiving, Halloween, Hanukkah, Rosh Hashanah, Lent, Flag Day, Emancipation Day, Veterans Day, Memorial Day, Independence Day. And if you read their list, it's basically every holiday that is celebrated around the world. They have like all of them listed because they're in other countries. They don't celebrate them either. It's not just here in America. Uh, so they don't do that. They are forbidden to vote, salute the flag, or serve in the military. Why is that? Well, because the Jehovah Witness is a theocratic kingdom. And because they are a government ruled by God here on earth, and that all other governments are satanic, they do not recognize other governments. So they don't vote, they don't identify with the political party, they don't salute the flag or serve. Uh, it's their stand against the military that they're banned in the Soviet Union. Uh, that's uh, one of the reasons uh, why Soviet Union, because they don't serve in the military. They do not accept blood transfusions. And uh, I mentioned Paul Blizzard. That His, his coming to Christianity had to do with, with blood transfusion and... Uh, Oh, that's a good. That's a good. Uh, that's a good question, Mike. I bet no. I bet they can get excused uh, because they don't recognize the court. Uh, I, I did read one article said that you know some may stand like at the playing of the national anthem or whatever or for the pledge. They may just stand out of respect for other people around them, or maybe they just don't want to feel weird sitting there with nobody else and everybody else is standing. Uh, but that's that is a good uh, that is a good question. I, I would say no. I'd say that they get out of that um, due to like religious reasons. Uh, they do not accept blood transfusions, and this is from their website. Uh, they say this is a religious issue rather than a medical one. Both the Old Testament and the New Testament clearly command us to abstain from blood. Genesis 9, 4, Leviticus 17, 10, Deuteronomy 12, 23, Acts 15, 28, 29. Also, God views blood as representing life, Leviticus 17, 14. So we avoid taking blood, not only in obedience to God, but also out of respect for him as the giver of life. That's taken straight off their website. So remember, you know, we looked at Buddhism last week, and based upon our definitions of occult and false religion, uh, you know, Buddhism falls into the false religion category. Uh, but when we go back to week one, I defined occult. An occult is a religious group that denies one or more of the fundamentals of biblical truth. Specifically, it is a group that claims to be Christian but whose teachings, if believed, would prevent someone from having a saving relationship with Jesus Christ. Uh, they also have these main characteristics. And I listed, you'd have to go back to your week one notes where I listed the characteristics of a cult. They don't allow you to ask questions or question their doctrine, dogma, or opinions. 
you, you can't. If you're out here beating on doors, you can't you can't question the Watchtower Society headquarters president, governor board. You can't question them. They hand it down. They tell you what to say. They tell you what to read. They tell you what you can't read. They tell you what you have to believe. Uh, and so that's it. Cults strive to brainwash their people to believe without thinking. Uh, cults have a tendency to prey on the vulnerable and outcast, appealing to them and making them feel good in order to gain their trust. Uh, it hides its true purposes and expectations from recruits. It strictly follows the ideals of one person, uh, sometimes a small group of people. Uh, this is kind of, uh, uh, yes, it subtracts from the scripture. You're right, Chris. Uh, it allows the leaders to have different rules and expectations in the body of members. Uh, I don't follow them along. I don't hear a lot in the news. I, I don't, you know, I don't know how they follow along compared to uh, the, the the members and the, and the leaders. And they closely control the actions of members. So those are characteristics of a cult. Those are characteristics of Jehovah Witness. Um, they're programmed on what to say, what to read, and how to respond. They cannot think for themselves or ask questions. They have to believe everything that the organization tells them. They're instructed to shun and avoid all contact with anyone that turns away from the Jehovah Witness. Uh, so if you get out of Jehovah Witness, you're done. They deny the Trinity and the deity of Jesus. They teach another way to get to heaven other than Jesus, and that's just a few things. That's quite a few major things. So, cult. Um, you know, that's that's kind of it. So as we finish up, I know we're at 701, but uh, sharing Jesus. Um, this is probably going to be like the first one of every every week. Witnessing to a Jehovah Witness or witnessing to whoever must be done in Christian love and with compassion. Uh, they have been deceived and believe a false gospel, yet many have a genuine love for God. They're completely sincere in their beliefs. Uh, that means don't slam the door in their face or be rude to them. They are lost souls that if they die without accepting the truth, they will spend eternity in hell. Uh, when we're mean to them, we're, uh, here, here's the thing. They are told by their leaders, they are told by their leaders that faithful witnesses leads to persecution. So their leaders tell them, hey, when you go out and you knock on people's doors, people are going to be rude to you. They're going to slam their door in your face. They're going to call you stupid. They're going to call you names. They're going to do that. When we do that, when we treat them rudely, when we ignore them, all that's doing is giving their leaders more credibility. Uh, which brings me to my second point. Don't be afraid of them. Uh, it's it's actually sad, church, more than anything. And, and I, I I got to where you know I, I I talked I told you I got blacklisted from them because I talked to them and I asked them questions and I guess they're like we're not going there anymore. But when I first you know when they come and visit, man, they're they're nice, they're polite. Uh, you know they they look just like you and me. They believe they're out earning their salvation. They um. Uh, why are they banned from Russia? Uh, now because they refuse to serve in the military, and so uh, that's kind of Russia's like you can't you can't come here. Now whether they have some secret groups there, I, I don't know, but they're not allowed to to set up there. Uh, last thing I read, so uh, but don't be afraid of them. Let them know how much you care about their eternal salvation. Uh, share your Christian testimony with them. Talk to them, discuss spiritual matters with them, but do not allow them to conduct what they describe as a Bible study, which is actually a study out of their literature. Uh, one of the things that I kind of do is like, okay, after, you know, you, you give me your spiel, but I get equal time, and I get to ask questions too. And, uh, you know, they can't, they can't, usually can't answer them because they're not allowed to answer them, or they, it's not in their manual. To answer them, uh, 
be aware that they will not read any non-watch tower literature or attend a church service. You can invite them to church till they're you're blue in the face. Uh, they won't come. They won't take. They won't touch, take a copy of Open Windows. They won't take your Sunday school book. They won't take a gospel track. They won't take any of that. They're not allowed to. Uh, they say that they will only accept what the Bible says, but uh, I, I'll get. I'm get I'll get there, Susie. Hang on. Put a uh, dog ear that comment right there. Uh, they say they only accept what the Bible says, but their New World Translation has been altered to reflect their theology. And many verses in the New Testament that point to the full deity of Christ Jesus have been changed to support their view that, that only partial deity can be ascribed to him. Uh, Speak the truth in love, Ephesians 4.15. Direct all your conversation to the person of Christ and the need to put total faith in what he has done. Listen, sharing, sharing the scripture, you, can't, you, you can never go wrong with sharing the scripture. Hey, John 3.16. I mean, even if they put their like, la, 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 I'm not listening. Listen. Let the scripture do what the scripture does. And, you know, that's, that's kind of it. Do not allow them to lead you down the path they wish you to take. Namely, considering how you can survive Armageddon to live on a paradise earth. That's the big thing. Uh, and then pray for them. Um, ask if you can pray for them. So these are some questions you can ask. And, and Susie, what I have done is I kind of usually let their conversation dictate the questions that I'm going to ask back. Uh, and, and, you know, they're, they're going to talk about the end of, end of the world. They're, they're very big and the Armageddon's a big thing, you know, the end of the world and, and living here, you know, and so as they ask these questions, uh, you know, you can let those kind of dictate what you're going to ask. Uh, I finally flat out asked them, I said, you know, your, your faithful going door to door. And they're like, yes. I'm like, what is your purpose in going door to door? And they really, you know, and, and, and I was kind of like, I finally said, like, listen, I, I'm, I'm a Christian. And when I go to somebody's door and, and I want to share with, I share the gospel with them if they don't know Christ, I want them to be saved from their sins and born again. I want them to be, you know, to have a new, you know, a new life in Christ, except Jesus. That's that's kind of my mission. What is your mission? And they're kind of because it's not in their book. They don't they don't know, uh, and so they they are they they are they are like program robots. And uh, so here's some questions you can ask as we finish up. What's your spiritual background? Have, you know, have you always been a Jehovah Witness? Uh, you know, did you come from a different background? What are the core beliefs of the Watchtower? Uh, you know, they can tell you kind of like, this is what we believe. It's like, well, you know, this is this is what I believe. I believe Jesus is the Son of God, and the Word was made flesh, and the Word was God, and the Word was with God. Uh, you can ask them, have you ever been mocked for your door-to-door -door work as you spread the message of the watchtower? Like, you know, how, how do people treat you? Uh, it, you know, do you feel marginalized by the rest of society because of some of your practices and beliefs? Uh, you know, out of curiosity, like, some of the questions that they answer on the on their website is like, do your kids, you know, feel slighted because they don't celebrate Christmas or they don't have birthdays? And they put like little quotes they took from some kids that are Jehovah Witnesses and like, we get gifts throughout the year as a surprise and we don't, you know, we don't feel, you know, they answer these things. So, you know, they may be more than happy to answer them. Uh, what do you believe about Jesus Christ? You know, what do you believe about Jesus Christ? And they tell you, well, like, this, is, this is what I believe about Jesus Christ. What do you think of Jesus' claim that he was God and the way back to God? You know, what do you think about that? Uh, how would your friends and family in the Watchtower react if you converted to Christianity? You know, 
But if you were to leave Jehovah's Witness, what, what would happen? Um, do you think there's a difference between the religion and the relationship with God that Jesus talked about? You know, there's, it's, it's like everything else. You know, you all, you all are well equipped. You, you know, you know, you know enough about scripture. You know enough about the teachings of Jesus that you can kind of, you know, they kind of hinge on the end times and that kind of stuff. And you know enough about that, you know, to, to say, Hey, uh, you know, this is what I believe. And uh, like I said, let the scripture do what the scripture does and uh, let God kind of handle it from there. Cause that's all we can do anyway. You know, all we can do is share the scripture. Uh, we can't force anybody to believe it or accept it or, you know, to be saved. We just, we share the scripture and, uh, you know, there are people in our workplace, they're, you know, there are people at school, uh, they're Jehovah witnesses, they're being deceived and, uh, they're just out trying to earn, you know, earn their spot in paradise. Uh, cause that's what they've been taught. And they're, um, you know, we, 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 we should be like, you know what? We want to get out and, and visit people and tell them about Jesus because, you know, Jesus commands us to in the great commission to go into all the world and to make disciples. Um, that, that should motivate us, but you know, it, it doesn't, uh, and, and I'm included. I'm, I'm guilty of that. And so, uh, you know, they're lost and, you know, we will look at the door. You really, you really don't have to be like, what will I say? Because really, they only say a first few things, and and they don't have, you know, that's kind of what they're told to say. And once they kind of get past that, they they're they're kind of at a loss. So it's not like they're going to fire back at you. Well, what about this Bible verse? And what about where it says this? They're not going to do that uh, because that's not, you know. Uh, so that's that's kind of it. So uh, I hope you've learned something tonight. I hope you you know have, have got something out of this. I hope you do. Like I said, I think the main goal, more than anything, is that you know we realize. I'm gonna scroll back up here to the top of my notes. Uh, according to their statistics, 8.6 million, 8.6 million people lost. Um, and I think for me, that's uh, that's that's the kind of thing. Uh, I, I want to be impressed upon my heart and the need to share the gospel. Um, I hope you have a great rest of the week. I hope you didn't get snowed in today. Uh, if you, if the, I, I know the first, I, I'm going to say this and, and don't get mad at me. Uh, the first drop of snow today how many of y'all ran to the store to get bread and milk and eggs? Oh my goodness. If you need bread, if you get snowed in, you need some bread, bread milk, and eggs, come get me. I prefer if I'm going to get snowed in to have Mountain Dew and bacon and summer sausage and things that won't spoil. So, you know, that's just me. But anyway, I hope you have a great week, a blessed week. I, I miss you guys. I, I do. I, I look so forward. Uh, some of you, I, I see your names come on the screen. Um, and I know that you're not able to come to church right now. And I just kind of light up when I see you pop on the screen. And, and I, I miss you. Your church misses you. And so I, I cherish this time. I love Wednesday night. And uh, I hope that you have a, a wonderful week. Uh, I will kind of, you know, it's 7.13, but um, you can you can log off anytime you want to. So it's not like I'm keeping you at church. You're in my living room. Uh, so if I don't know if you're doing the daily Bible reading uh, on the YouVersion app that I kind of recommended. Uh, we're in the story of Joseph now. And uh, this has nothing to do with the lesson. This is, this is, the, this is a bonus right here. Um, uh, I, I cried this morning when I read it. Joseph is one of my, you know, outside of Jesus, I think he might be my favorite uh, character in the scripture, uh, at least in the top couple. Uh, and he's reunited with his brothers. Um, and I just kind of thought about what that might be like. And I thought, how incredible. You know, Joseph, 
you know, he, he, his brother, his brother sold him to slavery. Uh, and, uh, you know, he said, you know, listen, you, you didn't do this to me. God had a purpose in all of it. And the purpose was for me to be in this position to, to rescue you all. Uh, to make sure that you had food because this is, you know, we're just a couple of years in the famine and there's five more years and, and uh, just that whole re, that whole reunion. And, and I, I loved reading that. And I say all this to, to say that I, I hope, I hope that you're doing, you know, uh, the daily Bible reading with me. If not, I, you know, I can, I can send you the link to it and you can jump in, but uh, it's just been a while since I had read that story. And uh, over the last couple of days, it's been Joseph and how the Lord has blessed him. But that reunion, that reunion with his brother is pretty sweet. It's, it's one of the, it's, to me, it's just, you know, it's one of the sweetest stories of forgiveness and love and, and God's provision and that homecoming and what that must have been like when uh, you know, Joseph's father found out that Joseph was still, still alive. So, I just tossed all that out because that's kind of in my readings and that was kind of on my mind. I wanted to share that with you. It's, it's, uh, it's pretty awesome. So if you need anything this week, you can holler at me. And uh, Okay, I will miss Leslie. Uh, and uh, you have a blessed week. And uh, I will see you Sunday.